and wait for the disembodied ones. There we go. Um, so we're going to record um, this evening so that we can share this recording um, with other people. Um, but thank you so much to everybody for coming along um, to our first Building Group Power um, session of um, the Young Greens Exec Term for 2023 to 2024. Um, we're really excited about it. Um, to be launching this event series where we can train and support group organizers like yourselves, um, where we can bring you together and provide you with a space for um, skills development and training um, and for building the Young Greens as well. Um, so I'm Jane, I am the co-chair of the Young Greens, I she her pronouns, I'm currently located in Birmingham. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about this evening. Hopefully we're going to talk through some things which are helpful to people um, around starting a new group, hopefully get some of you inspired to do so um, and give you some of the information that you need. Um, Callum, Amelia, do you guys want to introduce yourselves as well? One of you jump in and go first. Um, so I'm Callum, I use he, they pronouns, and I am one of the Green Students Co-Conveners, Green Students Committee Co-Conveners. There are so many words in that title. Um, yeah, it's lovely to have you all here. Hi everyone, I'm Amelia, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm also a Green Students Committee Co-Convener. Co there we go. Uh, and I'm based in Leicester. It's a right tongue twister, that committee title. Um, yeah, um, so um, Callum and you know, me and I are going to talk you through some various different things. Um, but just before we get started, I was just going to say as well that this is a Young Greens space, which means that our safe spaces policy does apply here, um, as does our safeguarding policy. Um, so if you have any safeguarding concerns throughout the evening, um, or if you have any concerns about the safe space being violated, um, please do like directly message me. I'm responsible for um that this evening um and we will take appropriate action on that okay i'm gonna do the awkward thing of sharing my screen and awkwardly staring at my screen like i'm an old person um i'm not that old i promise um i am still a young green so uh we're gonna get started um really hoping that everyone can see this callum and amelia shout at me if you can't Fantastic. I can see you thumbs up in me. Um, so um, we're going to start um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what what the Young Greens are, who we are, what we do, um, how we run. Um, so you have a little bit of background information on that. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Amelia um, and she's going to talk a little bit about getting Greens together, how you start building a Young Greens group, um, as well as some kind of common hurdles um, and kind of how to overcome those challenges. Um, and then Callum is going to talk about kind of best practices, support advice that we can provide in the Young Greens um, and a little bit of learning from experience as well, because we have lots of Young Green groups um, who have been trying lots of different things. And we want to kind of share that with you um, as well. And then at the end, we'll have some time for you all to ask us some questions. Um, we'll probably turn the recording off at that point um, so you can ask questions um, if you've got anything that's come up. Um, throughout the evening that you want to get a little bit more kind of insight on um, and we've been more than happy to answer them. So introduction to the Young Greens. Um, so you're here which means you've heard of us which is great um, but if you don't know that much about us um, and have maybe only just started getting involved um, we are the youth and student wing of uh, the Green Party in England and Wales. Um, so our membership is open to anybody who is a Green Party member who is under 30 or who is a full-time or part-time student. Um, don't have to do anything to sign up, you just automatically become a Young Green. Um, we have, this slide says 6,000, it's slightly higher than that now. Um, it's about seven or 8,000 um, at this point, um, and that number is growing all the time um, and we have an ever-growing network of young people and students across the party who are making real change in their local areas um, as well um, as kind of in the party and the local parties as well. Um, one of the things that we're really proud of in the Young Greens is that we have a really long history of training activists, um, of growing uh, young people's skills and helping them to develop um, through a variety of different things. Um, one of kind of our really flagship things that we do is we run our 30 to 30 program every year. You might have heard of it. Um, 
some fantastic people like Carla Denya have been through it. Um, Benali Hamdash has done it as well. Um, and we're really proud of that program for supporting young people um, and providing with them with the skills and the knowledge that they need to get involved in the party. Um, but on top of that, um, we also do lots of work supporting young people in their local areas as well to get involved, to build their connections with each other. Um, and that is predominantly through the young green groups and societies that we support, um, which is kind of what we're here to talk about tonight and how we do that. Um, and we've had lots of growth throughout the last couple of years. Um, so the pandemic stopped a lot of group organizing, unfortunately moved a lot of it online, um, but it's really been growing back and we've seen a real big growth in young people and students getting involved um, and coming together in their local areas to make change. So how we run, how do we work? So I've got, got a nice big structural diagram later, which I'll talk you all through. Um, but the long and short of it is that um, we have an executive committee that is responsible for running the Young Greens. Um, so as I said at the beginning, I'm one of the co-chairs. My fellow co-chair, Lou, unfortunately, couldn't be here tonight. Um, and we chair um, a committee of um, 20 different roles. And that's made up of a variety of different people, including Callum and Amelia, um, as well as a variety of different portfolio roles and uh, liberation and special interest um, group officers as well. We also have the Green Students Committee, um, which Callum and Amelia um, co-convene. Um, that is very much about supporting um, university groups, but also all of our student um, focused campaigning. So everything from um, school and college level um, all the way through to university, higher education, um, postgraduate level as well. Um, and kind of our real core purpose, as I've already kind of said, is about providing young greens um, a way to engage with each other, to get involved with the party um, and to organize together as young people and students as well. That's really kind of our primary purpose and what we work towards. So this is my lovely structural diagram. Um, it's, it's not that complicated, I promise. Um, so in the center, we have the executive committee as I've already talked about. It's made up of a variety of different roles, um, including our Green Students co-conveners, um, who um, co-convene the Green Students Committee. We also have a couple of other national committees. So we have our Democracy and Accountability Committee who kind of do what it says on the tin. They're responsible for our democracy. So our elections that we run every year, as well um, as our um, policy process, um, in addition to also our accountability sessions that hold members of the Executive Council. Um, and they are also responsible for running our complaints and disputes procedure as well. Nationally, we also have um, a number of special interest groups um, and a number of liberation groups as well. So they each have their own committees that includes one of the portfolio officers, one of the liberation officers even, <laughs> um, that sits on the National Executive Committee, as well as co-chairs and other roles as well. Um, and then over on the, I always get my left and my right wrong, left yeah left is the screen I'm hoping that's right nobody tell me if it isn't um over on the left of the screen we're going to go with that um we then have kind of our regional structures and our local structures as well um so we have um regional groups um who have their own committees um and they are very much set up and designed to support and kind of coordinate the local and university groups in their areas um, and then we have the local and university groups and they operate at the local level. So that may be across um, a city, it may be across a town, it may be across kind of a slightly larger region um, of a particular area, depending on sort of the membership base in there. Um, and then we also have our university societies as well. Um, and they are very much located and based at universities often affiliated with their student union as well um, and are very focused on engaging students um, at those different committees. Um, so we on the National Executive are responsible for supporting all of the different parts of um, our structures as well as the wider membership and providing them the support. Um, so you can find this particular diagram on our website. Um, I think we're probably going to share the slides as well with everybody. 
Um, so you'll be able to have a bit of a look at it, at it as well. Um, but that's in very brief how we run and how we are structured. And now I'm handing over to Amelia. So Amelia, over to you. Thank you, Jane. Now I'll talk about some about the ways that you can recruit new members when setting up your group. So could we go to the next slide? <laughs> Thank you. One of the easiest ways for you to gain members is to use social media. So starting an Instagram or a Facebook account and following the right accounts can really increase your visibility before you've even had your first event. If you create posts to let people know you're making a group or what they can expect from the group, and if you organize like a first meetup, that'd be a great way to have already some people interested in coming along to your events. If you're setting up a group at a your university, putting up posters is also a great way, um, especially in high traffic areas and having a QR code that people can scan to immediately sign up, that's a great way to just get people's contacts straight away. If you have the resources to do um, this, I would also recommend like talking to your local university's tabloid if you have one. So from my experience at chairing at Lancaster, we contacted the local tab, tab and they were basically doing a, an assortment of like articles to showcase new societies. And by contacting them and having like a piece written about us, it really helped us boost our visibility during the pandemic. And it'd be great if you could try and do something like that if you have like a local paper. You could also use more kind of direct tactics like giving out leaflets on campus or in town. Uh, you could create some resources with your details on it so people can contact you and learn more. And again, I would recommend doing this in like high traffic areas on your campus. And if you do it more regularly, more people will notice that you are like present at the university. And yeah. Another thing I'd recommend is getting in contact with your local party and seeing if they have any resources that they can give you or if they could share the word that you're making a group. And if you also go to local events like local action days, that will also boost your chances of meeting people who might be interested. Uh, would you mind going on to the next slide, Jane? Thank you. So now we'll start to go into like different hurdles that you might face while making your group. So the first thing is to find people who want to join the group. And I know from my experience, it can be hard to find people who are actually engaged and care about green politics. So here are some different ways that some groups have recruited this year. So as you can see, Sheffield did some stalls at Freshers' Fairs. Uh, Leeds did a drop-in social event where people could come in their own time to learn more about the Green Party and then Bath has done like kind of networky approaches by contacting local groups and using group chats uh, to get the word out and Lancaster leafleting around the campus is another way and I just wanted to ask you what what do you think is the most effective approach uh, so if I give you maybe a couple of minutes or a few moments that would be great so if you could put which approach you think is best in the chat or maybe raise your hand that would be that would be good maybe another minute So getting the local party to advertise the group, definitely great way to get the word out there using networks that already exist with people that are interested in green politics for sure. Drop in stalls, yeah. Definitely using like um, social media networks is probably the easiest way to do it and dropping socials again people are coming up to you rather than you approaching them so it might suit them better because they might actually be interested cool 
Oh, a football team. That sounds very interesting. Um, right. Jane, would you mind going on to the next slide? Thank you. So now forming your committee is where like the real work comes in. Hopefully you will have a few people when you start your first meeting. And the first step really is to get to know one another, find out what your that their, their interests are and what skills they have. And this will come in really helpful when you split the roles between everyone and work out where everyone fits. Um, I also think it's quite important early on to set group expectations. So how much work should you put into the group, how regular you will meet and what you'd like to achieve for the next over the next year or term. That would be good to kind of establish from the get go. And creating a group chat on WhatsApp or Facebook is a really easy way to keep in touch and makes it easier to get together after the first meeting. In the second meeting, this is where you would ideally ide delegate your roles so people know how to help. And this makes it easier to run the group from then on. Even if you aren't an official group, having like an events calendar as well is also great for seeing the bigger picture and how your group can organize and plan events. And it's also important to think about what type of events you'll do. So thinking about that early on and how you might, might allocate your resources and who you might reach out to. So one thing I would recommend as well is from my time at Lancaster, having like a mix of events is quite important. So maybe having like social events and then more kind of productive events. And this is to keep your members engaged because there might be some people that are there more for the social aspect and then some people that are more into like the elections and the more politics side of things. Um, the last thing I would recommend is to fill out the Young Greens affiliation form, which I'm just going to put in the chat here. Um, this is just a way for you to let us know that you're setting up a group and then we can support you and provide resources like freshers packs when the time comes. Um, so other than affiliation, holding an election is also an important thing to do at some point when you're setting up a group. And if you're affiliated with your university, this will happen every year, but it's important to ensure that your group is run democratically and um, making sure everyone that's in the roles has been elected. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So the last hurdle is affiliating with your, your university. This process can vary depending what university you're at, but it's a great thing to do for many reasons because you can access university spaces for events and have a stall at freshers fairs and you can access support from the union. And usually to affiliate your society, you will need a, tre a treasurer, a president and a secretary Although some universities need like a certain amount of members to affiliate, but it's worth checking with your union if you're a university group. Um, another thing to, to know is affiliation varies at the time of year. So uh, depending on the university, so most are around the summertime. So make sure that you know when your affiliation period is and make sure that you get all like your documentation ready by the time the deadlines come around. And in terms of documentation, you'll need things like a list of your members, maybe a constitution and inventories, that kind of thing. But if you need help, it's definitely worth contacting your students union because they will tell you what you need to do. Um, I think that's everything for me. Um, so I'll pass on to Callum now. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, this is the first of the sections we'll be going through. It's campaigning for change. So just a couple of the examples of what Young Greens are doing and how you might want to replicate those at your, at your university or in your local area. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so these are some lovely examples of some of the campaigns that the Young Greens are doing. These were also in our freshers pack and I'll stuck on my wardrobe, you might be able to see there. Um, but some of our main focuses this year, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but some of them are definitely around um, action on housing, um, tuition fees um, and probably like supporting striking workers um, because at some point there will be strikes in the next year with our lovely Tory government. Um, so 
essentially these are the like the campaigns that we'll be doing we'll be putting out messaging and stuff like nationally that you can kind of repost and share locally um and feel free to also you know draft your own messages around these types of things look out for events that link to them if you want to link in with some of like the young greens messaging um yeah we'll go into some more examples on the next slide thank you um and one of the best ways to kind of get campaigning um, that is kind of maybe more organic, but also helps you reach out to new people is to just have a presence at places. Um, so whether that's protests, demonstrations, um, at the moment, you know, we've got a lot of action on um, a ceasefire in Palestine, um, on like oil expansion for Rosebank, picket lines for striking workers. Um, your local party sometimes might organize that. So it might be good to um, tag along but if not you can you kind of use your own agency and go along as well um, feel free to if you have a group budget you can make a banner or you can make a social out of it as well so a lot of our groups have done like banner making poster making stuff like that so it gets people together before the event and kind of you can make a whole thing out of it um, and it also helps you build a lot of links with other movements um, specifically in the student movement like rent strikes student unions the UCU um, people on planet as well i I've, I've worked a lot with them at Bath. It varies, obviously, uni to uni and in different groups, but um, working with similar groups can be really helpful and help you get the message out. So, I mean, after we did an event at Bath with People on Planet in the first couple of weeks, and a lot of their members didn't really know we existed before that, um, and we had a lot of them join after. So just kind of like having a presence and working with these groups can be super useful um, for a bunch of a bunch of different things. Um, and also there might be people in your local party or in your group membership that have links to these movements. So don't be afraid to reach out and see if anyone does have those connections. And also if you see a group locally that you really want to work with, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Um, and if you you know, want any advice on how to go about that, feel free to message someone from the Young Greens Exec and we have a bunch of resources and experience dealing with this kind of stuff. Can go to the next slide, please. Amazing. Um, and then this, I think, is our last kind of like scripted section, <laughs> um, which is on kind of best practices. So what your group can be doing. Um, it's by no means, a you know, doesn't cover everything that you could be doing um, and some of the support and advice from the Young Greens and what we can give you. Amazing. And I think Amelia has already talked about a couple of these, um, but I cannot stress this enough. Plan ahead um, because things do come up, um, whether that's kind of like coursework deadlines or local elections or if you're working, loads of stuff can come up. So if you have kind of a planned calendar in advance, you can kind of work towards deadlines. And that's sometimes really helpful for people. Um, and also Amelia kind of also talked about this as well, like vary the events you do. Some people want to go for more politics, some people want to go for more social stuff. If you're a university society, um, it can be really good to do events on campus so freshers can join, but also do stuff kind of in town or closer to other student communities, um, just so it's accessible for more people. And also having, um, when you're doing socials and events, having kind of a good balance between sober socials um, and drinking socials, if that's what you want to organize, just because then it remains more accessible for people. Um, so maybe you can like plan kind of a, you know, every other time you do something, it's a politics event or something. So you can really kind of plan it out. Um, check your group email if you have one. Um, well, actually set up a group email. It's probably the first thing. <laughs> and then check it regularly um, because a lot of people will be reaching out. So if they see you on your local party website or the SU website, they might email you a couple of questions to find out more before making the decision to join. Or they might be asking um, when your next events are, stuff like that. And it's really good to kind of make sure you reply to them because they're more likely to join if they know what you're doing. Um, and if you are struggling to come up with events, we have a lovely new initiative on the Green Party of England Wales Students Instagram, which I suggest you all follow, um, which is Society of the Month. So this is for uh, groups that are affiliated to universities um, to, and essentially they nominate themselves every month and we select a, we select a winner. Um, and we share a couple of the events that they've been doing. Our October Society of the Month was Lancaster Uni Greens, and they've done some really cool stuff, like um, they've been doing debates, tote bag painting, um, their freshers stall also looked really good. It's hard not to with our lovely resources. Um, and yeah, so supporting local events in your region, like I just talked about, 
and also finding other groups with similar interests to collaborate. Um, so social impact, environmental charities, um, stuff like that. So we've um, at Bath, we've got Amnesty Society, People and Planet. We have a left union. Um, obviously, the relationships do vary, but it's really important to kind of reach out and get a community going, especially when you're doing bigger things like talking about um, divesting campaigns, um, campaigns on housing. It's really good to have a nice like community built up around that. And it's a lot easier at universities um, to do that, but it can also work at a local level as well. And yeah, so some of the ways that we can help you. Uh, we have our freshers packs. We, we have a couple of them down there. Um, I can see Bath's one on there. I just cheekily snuck that one in. Um, but we can also give you advice on how to set up your committee, uh, how to get in touch with other young greens. We have our Slack network, which I think is on the next slide, but I'll just give it a cheeky shout out now. Um, it, we have a lot of different kind of uh, how to documents. Um, so if you ever are struggling with something, please do email either me, Amelia, Jane, Lou, um, or, and we can kind of like send you in the right direction with things. That's literally what we were elected for. Um, and your local party can also be really helpful. A lot of the time, the relationship isn't the easiest, um, but when you have a good relationship with your local party, they can help obviously with organizing action days, getting you in speakers. If they have councillors elected, it can be really good to bring them in for a speaker event and also more localized resources. So if there's, you know, like things that your local party are wanting to talk about, if they're, you know, going to, close a rail line in your local area, for example, they can help you out with more localized messaging um, to kind of share with your members. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and we also have a bunch of other things to get involved with. Um, and we really do recommend, I mean, you're all already here, which is amazing, um, but we have a bunch of other stuff that happens throughout the year. So we have our Slack network, um, which we've just kind of set back up um, which we recommend that you all kind of participate in, get talking to people. We have our like random channel just to talk about news stories that you've been seeing, events that you've seen. So it's like really good for idea sharing and just getting to know people. Um, and we also have the uh, facility to have check-ins and one-to-ones um, with the exec and admin officers. So if you are having any questions that you really want to chat through, and maybe if you're worried about how many people are turning up to your events or um, having difficulty setting up your committee, we can have those one-to-ones and have a bit more of an in-depth discussion outside of the kind of affiliation process as well. And I mean, you're already here. So attending skills trainings, you're doing a great job at doing this already. Um, but we all, go this is part of a series. So there's going to be four of these events throughout the year. So it'd be great to see you at those next ones as well. And by the end, your groups are going to be the best things you'll anyone's ever seen. Um, and yeah, we'll be sharing our freshers packs. And if you're a new group as well, um, we'll be doing stuff for refreshers as well. Um, so if you don't already have them, we'll be sending them out at, in time for that. Um, and also if you're a local group, we can still send you them if you're going to be uh, kind of needing them to advertise. I know we sent one to Northeast Green Party. Um, and yeah, and we also, um, Winter General Meeting is going to be online this year, I believe. Um, and the other event that we do that's similar is Young Greens Convention, um, which is going to, uh, which essentially we come together to vote on policy and we get to meet lots of lovely Young Greens from across the country. So we recommend that you all come to that as well. And this is now over to you. So if anyone has any questions that they've been thinking of either before the event or throughout, um, feel free to either put up your hand and we can come around to you or type them in the chat and we'll get to answering them. <laughs> 